think my channel could use some more John Locke, so I'm going to do a few videos now presenting a fuller picture of Locke's ethics, drawing from the Second Treaties of Government and the Letter Concerning Toleration. Let's go first to the Letter Concerning Toleration, where Locke describes ethics and the good life in uh, very broad terms, presenting uh, the framework with which uh, the framework in which to understand ethics. He says, a good life in which consists not the least part of religion and true piety concerns also the civil government, and in it lies the safety both of men's souls and of the commonwealth. Moral actions belong, therefore, to the jurisdiction both of the outward and inward court, both of the civil and domestic governor. I mean, both of the magistrate and the conscience. Here, therefore, is great danger, lest one of these jurisdictions entrench upon the other, and discord arise between the keeper of the public peace and the overseers of souls. Locke is saying that religion is concerned with ethics. Religion is concerned with the pursuit of the good life, and so is government. But the good life has more than one aspect. There are two aspects to the good life. One of them concerns the safety of the soul, and this uh, pertains to the conscience, and it is for this purpose that we have religion. And the other aspect of the good life pertains to the body, or we might say one aspect of the good life is the pursuit of eternal goods, and the other is the pursuit of temporal goods. And this second aspect of the good life, the pursuit of temporal goods, that which pertains to the body, this is where uh, government is concerned. And it's very important that we not let government intrude upon uh, those things which are uh, pertaining to eternal goods or vice versa. Every man has an immortal soul capable of eternal happiness or misery, whose happiness depending upon his believing and doing those things in this life which are necessary to the obtaining of God's favor and are prescribed by God to that end. Everyone has an immortal soul which continues after this life and the, uh, the, the purpose of ethics and the pursuit of the good life pertain to the goods of the soul. And this means obtaining God's favor by following um, the right religion rightly. And the other half of the good life is a bit different. Besides their souls, which are immortal, men have also their temporal lives here upon earth. The state whereof being frail and fleeting and the duration uncertain, they have need of several outward conveniencies to the support thereof, which are to be procured or preserved by pains and industry, etc., etc. This part therefore draws on another care and necessarily gives another employment. But the pravity of mankind, or the depravity of mankind, being such that they had rather injuriously prey upon the fruits of other men's labors than take pains to produce for themselves, the necessity of preserving men in the possession of what honest industry has already acquired, and also of preserving their liberty and strength, in other words, property, liberty, and life and health, are his priorities here, whereby they may acquire what they farther want, obliges men to enter into society with one another, that by mutual assistance and joint force they may secure into each other their properties and the things that contribute to the comfort and happiness of this life, leaving in the meanwhile to every man the care of his own eternal happiness. There are temporal goods and eternal goods. There are the goods of the soul. There is the pursuit of God's favor and eternal happiness after this life. And then there is the pursuit of temporal goods physical goods, things pertaining to the body, physical life, liberty, and property. And one of these things is the province of religion, and the other is the province of government, and we're not supposed to mix them up. A happy life consists of temporal and eternal goods, and one is for uh, government. That's the temporal goods, the other is for religion, that's the eternal goods, and we don't want to mix these things up. But there is... Um, uh, there are objective moral truths in both spheres.